continuing with the review, we have a system of equations. The one, first equation for Monday would be five windows plus ten rooms, five of whatever I get paid for a window plus ten of whatever I get paid for a room equals one hundred sixty dollars. <laughs> Let's try that again. And on Tuesday, we have eight times whatever I get paid for window plus two times whatever I get paid for room equals eighty-eight dollars. Well, two and eight divide evenly, five and ten divide evenly, so it wouldn't really matter which side we start on. Let's just subtract ten R from each side. We do want to subtract the one with the largest coefficient. So five of whatever I get paid for window is equal to $160 minus 10 of whatever I get paid for a room. Well, I want to know what one window is worth. One window is worth $32 minus two of whatever I get paid for a room. So I can rewrite Tuesday's equation. Eight of whatever I get paid for a window, which is $32 minus two of whatever I get paid for a room, plus two R. Equals 88. Eight times 32. 8 times 4 is 200, 8 times 3 is 240, or 8 times 3 is 24, so 8 times 30 is 240, plus 16, so that would be 256 minus 16R plus 2R equals 88. And I combine my two variable terms, and that gives me 256 minus 13, 14R equals 88. <clears throat> if I subtract my 256 from each side, then that tells me that negative 14 of whatever I get paid for room equals negative 168. And then dividing each side by negative 14. one room is worth twelve dollars and the question was how much do I get paid for a window and a window is worth thirty two dollars minus two of whatever I get paid for a room and I just figured out that was worth twelve dollars two twelves is twenty four subtract that from thirty two and you get eight dollars for a window And how many one-foot square tiles to tile a floor that is 16 by 29? Multiply those two together, and it's going to be about 3, or 30 times 15. 3 times 15 would be um, 45, so 30 times 15 would be 450. Put that into a calculator. It should be close to that. The exact number is 464. So sometimes rounding numbers to do a sanity check is a good idea because sometimes we hit the wrong numbers on our calculator. Let's simplify this expression. Let's go ahead and multiply 6 2x's. So that's the same as 12x. And 6 2's is 12. So then I'll just bring down the plus 5 and the 2x that I already had. Combine like terms. I have a 12x and a 2x, that's 14x. I have a 12 and a 5, that is 17. They want the constant term, in this case, and that will be 17. Sometimes they ask for the coefficient of the x term, but this time they're asking for the constant term. Negative 3 minus negative 8, or the absolute value of 8, sorry. So that is negative 3 minus 8. And that would be negative 11. 
An ant colony increases in number by 27%. So the increase means a 1 plus. And 27% is 0 0.27. So that is 1.27 after I add those together. If I multiply that by how many I had to start with, which was 10,000, then that will give me how many I have after one month. But let's go ahead and multiply that, erase that to the seventh power. So that would be multiplying by that seven times. That number is 53,288, if I round it to the nearest whole ant. Try that on your calculator just to make sure you're using the calculator right. Solving this exponential equation for the starting value. So we'll say y equals some starting value times 1.3 raised to the x. When y is 811, then x is 2. So I just chose that pair. It doesn't matter which pair you choose, but they have to go together. Solving that for V, well, it's being multiplied by 1.3 squared, so the opposite of that is to divide by 1.3 squared. 811 divided by 1.3 squared is 480. Well, that makes sense because it's getting larger by 30% each time, so the starting value is going to be less than 811. We know that much.